This is a story which shocked me, Wallahi al -Azim. And it is a story that existed in about the 10th century in the Islamic era. In that time, Muslims were attacking, sorry, enemies of Islam who were ruthless, were attacking the Muslims in a place called ar raqqa in Iraq. And they had invaded the homes and raped the women and stole their children and killed the old men. This is in history. Because they said, our Lord is Allah. After doing so, there was a man at that time who existed. He was a great scholar and a great leader in battles. His only cause and motive was to defend the Muslims wherever they may be, wherever they were killed or oppressed. His name was Abu Qudama. This man Abu Qudama was once, and he was very courageous. He was once sitting in the masjid. When a group of people came up to him and they said to him, Ya Abu Qudama, we have free time right now. Can you tell us of an amazing story that happened during your time? We want to hear the most unusual and surprising story ever to be heard. Can you entertain us, Ya Abu Qudama, and make us come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And then Abu Qudama sat for a while and gathered them. When everyone was silent, like you are right now, he said to them, I recall one of the most shocking stories that ever happened. Until today, I don't know how to explain it. He said, one time I went to that place, ar in Iraq. And I stood up in the mosques and I went out to the city where there were young Muslims to recruit soldiers who are ready to defend the borders of ar to stand guard over there. And if the enemy attacks, to be strong enough to defend the women and the children. As Allah says in the Quran, what is wrong with you, O believers, that you do not go and fight in the cause of Allah when the weak and feeble people are calling out, Oh Allah, send people to save us. We are responsible for the weak ones. Whoever and whenever, wherever they may be. And so he began to recruit people. Only a few gathered with him. And so he began to ask for some wealth and money. After the day had ended, he rented a small apartment, a little place to stay in. He said, I went into this place and I stayed there. And then just after Isha, when I was praying my night prayer, I was about to pray my witr. When all of a sudden, in the middle of the night, everything is quiet. You can hear the crickets outside. When my door began to knock, I said, Subhanallah, nobody knows me here. I've just arrived yesterday. And already my door is knocking? And someone's knocking at my door? He said, so I slowly went and opened the door. And in front of me there stood a woman. I could not see her face because she had covered all of her body, everything. And while she was covering her hand, she reached out her hand. And before she opened it, she asked, Are you the man who was calling out for recruitment today? Were you the man who was gathering wealth in order to go and guard our borders and protect us? He said, yes. You were the one who was calling to jihad. He said, yes, I am the one. So she said, please open your arm, your hand. And he opened his hand and she dropped a piece of cloth, which was wrapped up into his hand. And he said, take this. It is an aman. It is a trust. And she ran off. That's all she said. I wanted to ask her many other questions, but she had no reply. So I went inside and I opened that cloth and I found a piece of paper with something written on it and a thick lock of hair. I read the paper and the paper said, Today you were calling out for recruitment to fight with you and protect the weak people. I am a woman and unable to fight. And I don't have enough wealth to give you. So my heart was struck with shock and sorrow when I did not find anything to give you. So I went home and cut a lock of my hair. And that is the one you see in this cloth. 
the only thing which I can give to the cause of this is my lock of hair. I ask you to please use it as your rein, yani the rope that would steer the horse. So that maybe Allah will recognize this and know that I was fighting with you in that jihad. Even though taking a lock of the hair of a mu'min woman, giving it to a man is not allowed in Islam. But her jihad spirit reached that stage. She couldn't stop herself. She said, and tomorrow someone will come to you. He is a recruitment. See if he is worthy. And that is it. He said, Subhanallah, what kind of a woman is this? He said, so I took the lock of hair and I did put it onto my reins. And I, the next morning I gathered the troops and we went out in the, into the battlefield. <clears throat> when we reached the battlefield, you know, the borders, we noticed that a group of army after a day began to make their way towards us. And so I got the army ready and I told them to stand guard. As we were about to move forward, I heard a voice from a far distance calling out, Ya Ammi Aba Qudama, Ya Ammi Aba Qudama, Intadirni, wait for me, my uncle. He looked back and he found a fierce warrior on his horse galloping fiercely towards him. And he had his face covered like this. As soon as this man approached him, Abu Qudama looked at him and said, How can I help you? He said, Wait for me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, who has written for me to meet you and unite with you. He said, Calm down. Calm down and take a bit of breath. He said, You don't understand. I made a dua all my life to have this opportunity. And I thought that you were going to beat me. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that I was going to unite with you. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. He said, ask me, what do you want? He said, I want to fight with you. I want to have part in this. And then Abu Qudama said to him, show me your face. I want to know who you are. And then he reluctantly took the cloth off his face. And Abu Qudama said, and I looked at his face and before me was the most beautiful face that I'd ever laid eyes on. The face of a young man, about 17 or 18 years of age. His face was like the full moon in its brightness. And I noticed that he was young. And I said, son, what experience do you have? How can you come and fight with us? No, you are not allowed to come and fight with us. You are too young. Return back. And he said, but my mother came to you last night. He said, your mother? He said, yes, my mother. He said, who is your mother? And he said, she's the one that gave you a lock of her hair. And she told you to look after me. He said, is that your mother? He said, no. He said, you should go back and look after her son. Don't come here and fight. And he started to hold on to him, the young boy. And he said to him, no, Abu Qudama, no, no. My father fought in jihad and I want to fight too. I want to defend. Please accept me. I have great experience. I have fought many battles and I'm an experienced horse rider. I'm a really good experienced person. Wallahi, you will find me that I'm able to help you a lot. When he insisted on him and he insisted on him, Abu Qudama said to him, okay, if you are insisting on traveling along with us, then you have to stand in the last line. And your work is to prepare food for the soldiers. He said, fair enough. I'll do that. So they went out. And sorry, the enemy wasn't approaching, but they got they, they had news of the enemy approaching. And so the time of lunch came and the soldiers wanted to eat. And he sent out this young man, his name was Muhammad to go out and prepare the meal. And then when about one or two hours passed, no food had arrived. Abu Qudama said, so I went searching for him and thought what had kept him so long. And when I arrived, 
I found the pot was boiling in front of him and he was asleep beside it. I said, Subhanallah, he must be very tired because most active amongst all the men he would race after this one and race after that one, help this person, help that person. He was very active during the day. I became amazed how, how agile this young boy is, how enthusiastic this young man is. And so I thought, I felt sorry for him and I thought maybe he needs some rest. So I did not interfere and I did not disturb him. And I began to prepare and finish and complete off the meal myself. But as I was stirring, he said, I heard a small sound coming from him. So I looked immediately at him and all of a sudden I see his face begin to smile. He's asleep. After a few moments the smile grew. A few moments later his teeth began to show. And then even a few moments later he began to laugh in laughter and giggle. As he was laughing his laughter began to intensify until finally he awoke. Suddenly and he saw me in front of him with open eyes and his smile immediately failed, um, immediately faded away. As though he was shocked that I was there in front of him and he did not want me to be there. As though he had a secret. And then I said, and then he, he, he got up immediately and he said, Ya Ammi, I'm sorry, I didn't know that I had gone to sleep. Please, you don't have to prepare the food. Please let me. Abu Qudama said, no, you sit down. Wallahi, I will not let you do anything until you tell me why were you laughing? I said, I was laughing. I said, yes, you were laughing. Your laughter could reach a few meters away. Stammi Abu Qadama, since you saw me laughing and you won't let me go, I will tell you what I was dreaming about. But you have to keep it a secret between you and I. For if I tell you, maybe Allah will not accept my reward of coming here. Maybe it will be insincere. He said, please tell me. He said, I'm listening with open ears. I really want to know what he was seeing in his dream. And then the young boy said, I slept and then I noticed as if the last hour had come. The world ended. And the day of judgment came. Everybody was looking up into the sky. And then all of a sudden, I hear a voice calling out, grab Muhammad and take him to paradise. Amongst everyone, a light came to me, a light and took me away. And then there was a man next to me, a very handsome man. His light emanated from his face till it reached the far corners of what I could see. And he took me into Jannah. And I asked him, who are you? And he said, I am one of your servants, which Allah has made for you in Jannah, in your palace. And he said, where are you taking me? This is when he began to smile. He said, I'm taking you to your wealth and to your family and to your belongings and possessions in your palace in Jannah. And so his smile grew more. And then when he reached the great gates and the great doors of his large possession, he said, I cannot enter here. For you have women inside and I'm not allowed to set eyes upon them. His smile grew more. And so he entered. He said, and then I found many beautiful women. Their light was so great that I thought if they were to relieve, to, see, to show themselves on earth, they would light the whole earth. And they grabbed my, my arm and took me away. And I thought, are you my wives? And they said, no, 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 we are just your servants. But you have your princess waiting inside Al Khidr inside the tent, reclining on her silk sheets, waiting for you. And so I entered and all of a sudden I see a woman which almost made my heart escape, made my soul escape from my body. And I said to her, who are you? And a smile grew when his teeth began to show. And she said, I am the one whom Allah promised you. I am your wife in Jannah. I am the one who Allah gift wrapped it for you. And no mu'min knows what Allah has gift wrapped it for them in Jannah. Even for the women. 
And then he said, he came to extend his arm and touch her. And then she grabbed his arm and returned it back gently. And she said to him, No, Ya Muhammad, not now. I ask Allah to save you from any bad act. I am not yours yet. And it is because you have saved yourself from haram acts with other women, Allah gave me to you. So keep yourself pure, Ya Muhammad. وَمَوْعِدُنَا غَدًا عِنْدَ الْفُطُورِ our, our meeting is tomorrow and we shall break our fast together because Muhammad used to fast every day, one day on and one day off. And then he said, when she was speaking to me, I began to laugh and I really wanted to approach her and she would say, No, Ya Muhammad, not now. No, Ya Muhammad, not now. And I began to laugh and laugh until I woke up. That is my story, Ya Ammi Abu Qudam. Please keep it a secret between you and me, otherwise my rewards will be gone. He said, it's my secret. He said, Abu Qudam, I kept my eyes watching this young boy. The next day, the army, the enemy arrived. It was fierce. And we attacked and charged. I looked behind me where Muhammad was supposed to be standing. And all of a sudden, he was right in the front. And he did not have any experience in fighting because he could not hold his sword. Muhammad had deceived Abu Qudam in saying to him he has experience. He said, I could not reach him anymore. But he was right in the front line. And he would call out the message of his mother. Ya ibni, idha laqeetahum, fala tuwallihim duburak. If you meet them, then do not run away and show them your back. He would call out like that, Allahu Akbar! And he would fight whoever would fight him. He would fight whoever would hold the sword against him and against the Muslims. He would protect that person and then that person. Until finally Abu Qudama said, dust grew so much in my eyes and I lost sight of him. I did not know where he was. Finally Allah gave us victory because we were fighting for a noble cause. And at the end of the victory, we started looking for our martyrs. And then I just wanted to find Muhammad the young boy. I did not care about anyone else. I kept searching and searching. When all of a sudden I see at a distance a young boy holding out his arm and saying, Ammi, Ammi, and I could barely hear him. So I ran to him as fast as I could. And I grabbed his beautiful head as though he was my son. And I looked at a face, at a face that was once youthful, at a face that was once beautiful, at a face that was so handsome, and a body that was so young and strong. The horses had trampled him. The wheels had crushed his bones. His face, his face was indescribable. And he was holding a piece of his shirt which was ripped. And he was taking deep breaths, dying. And then Abu Qudama held his face and he began to cry. He said, my son, I told you that the war is very fierce. Didn't I tell you that the battle is not what you think? Didn't I tell you and didn't I tell you that you are still young? I told you my son and you had to go forward. Why have you done this to yourself? And he looked at him and he said to him, Ammi Abu Qudama, this is what my mother raised me for. My father died for this cause as well. Do you want me to, do you want to deny me? And you of all people, the Ammi Abu Qudama, you are telling me to go back when Allah says in the Quran, and what do you fear when fighting in his cause? He said to him, Ya Ammi, this is what I want. Wallahi, I could see my palaces in front of me. If only you could see what I could see, Ya Ammi. And then he said, but I require one thing of you. My mother, when you reach her, she'll be very saddened. And she may not believe you that I have died in the cause of Allah. So I want you to take this piece of my shirt and show it to her so that she can relieve her sadness and know that I am in Jannah and that what she has raised, she will also be in Jannah with me. Let her know that do not be saddened, my mother. I died and you will be with me forever in eternity in Jannah. My mother, I died in the cause of Allah. Now it will be a guarantee that you will be with me and we will be together with my father. 
He said, because nothing else will calm her heart. He said, Ya Ammi Abu Qudama, I also have a young sister. Her name is Fatima. She's only eight years old. She has grown up with me to love me so much when my father passed away. And I love her extremely. However, my Am, her love I have never seen like that before. She's too attached to me. When you reach her, please try to look after her. Please try to calm her down. Please try to say soothing words to her. For I fear her consequence. She loves me too much. And don't show her, show her my shirt. Abu Qudama promised. And then while he was holding him in his arms, young Muhammad began to smile. And his smile grew. And then it grew even more. And then even more until he began to giggle with laughter. And he said, Ya Ammi Abu Qudama, La ilaha illallah, Inni la ajidul mardiyata jambi jambi. The woman that he saw in his dreams, her name was Mardiyah. Mardiyah, the pleasing one. He said, Ya Ammi Abu Qudama, look at her. She has just come down from the sky and she is lying beside me holding my hand. She's waiting for me, Ya Am. Allah sadaqani wa'da. He gave me what he has promised. I am going to Jannah with Mardiyah. She will keep me company, Ya Ammi Abu Qudama. Our secret between you and I. And then he died while he was, do while he was biting onto his lip like this and saying to Abu Qudama, Ya Ammi, remember our secret. And he died and went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a noble death. And then Abu Qudama went back to his land, into, his, into the village in Raqqa. And all the women went out to meet the Mujahideen. And then came the mother of Muhammad, searching for him. And then she came up to Abu Qudama and she said to him, My son, where is my son? Abu Qudama looked at her and said, He passed away. And he says, He fought in the front line without returning back. And he did what you had advised him and what you trained him to do. He said, I do not believe you. I don't believe you. It's just as her son said. And then he said, but he told me to give you this shirt. And she looked at his shirt and she looked at it and examined it. And she knew that it was the blood and the stains of her young son, Muhammad. And then she cried and put her arms up to Allah. And she said, Alhamdulillah, the one who has saved my son, I will now definitely be guaranteed that I will be reunited with him and my husband. But before that, Abu Qudama saw something, a young girl racing towards every man, fluttering like a butterfly, touching this man and looking at him, then touching another man and looking at him, then turning another man around and examining his face like a young child does. And Abu Qudama knew that this was Fatima looking for her brother. And so I went up to Fatima and I grabbed her and I hugged her and kissed her. And I said to her, what are you looking for? And Fatima said, my brother, Muhammad, where's Muhammad? Where's Muhammad? Do you know where Muhammad is? Do you know where Muhammad is, my brother? I love him. I want to see him. And he promised me that he will return because Muhammad said to Abu Qudama, he said to him before he died, I promised my sister that I'm going to return. Otherwise she would have never left me. But I'm not going to return. He said he promised him that he's going to come back. Where is he? Abu Qudama started to cry. And he said to him, Fatima, your brother says, Assalamu alaikum to you. And he says that soon you're going to meet him in Jannah, inshallah. She said, Jannah? Did he die? Abu Qudama said, Yes, but he died a noble cause. Before he could finish this word, Fatima took a very deep breath and she fell unconscious to the ground. He came to pick her up, but the mother raced to her. And she said, Leave her. And she took her daughter away and into the room. Abu Qudama knocked and knocked, but it was too late. He heard the mother inside crying and saying, Oh my Lord, my husband died for your cause and he is in Jannah, inshaAllah. My son, I have sacrificed him for you, Ya Allah, and I have raised him. Please do not, do not deny me my presence and my unity with him in Jannah. And now my daughter has passed away and followed her brother. Ya Allah, my husband, my son and my daughter, they are all to you. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. To Allah we belong and to him we shall return. O oh Allah, guarantee me a place in Jannah with them. O oh Allah, unite me with them. And she began to cry until her voice faded away into the darkness. Abu Qudama kept knocking, but she would not open for him. He said, so I left her and I went away.
until this day, my dear companions, the story has remained unexplainable to me.